Um, so I'm so excited to announce this. We are sponsoring S. No, I'm kidding. We're not sponsoring this company. This is his water bottle. It's humongous. It's kind of an inside joke. So like all the all the uh, the big shot preachers who have really good hearts, many of them, they they've been drinking this. So I, for a joke, got it for John Mark, so he can have the really expensive sparkling water. Um, John Mark Baker is one of my good friends, and I met him a couple of years back, and I'm so, so grateful to have him. And as we felt, we've said before, we really try to pray and seek the Lord about who we invite here because of uh, what the Lord's trying to do, and we want to keep it special and protected and safe. And you were, you were never going to feel more safe with, with him. He is such a pure heart, such a genuine, humble, gentle person, and yet, at the same time, he's learned to be bold and to operate uh, with the Holy Spirit. And um, so he um, is currently pastoring in northern Michigan. So you might hear a little bit of a Canadian accent come out, eh? Um, it's, let me see if I can get it, Sioux St. Saint Marie, Sioux St. Marie, Michigan. So it's not even the peninsula. It's like at a little bit, it's they call the upper peninsula, the what do they call it, U- Uper? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, A and all the Canadian Joe. Uh, it, he's, he's a boat ready to speak. That was terrible. He's a boat ready. A boat. There we go. Um, anyway, I, I was really fascinated when I first met him because of his, his gentleness. He was so gentle. And then all of a sudden he would just go, oh, hey, you, and then start prophesying over somebody and it was laser accurate, and uh, so he's just such a a good friend of this house um, already, and is going to be for many many years of my life. And we're gonna I'm excited to run with him. But you guys just welcome him up. He's gonna share whatever God gives him. <laughs> Prepare to encounter God. <laughs> guys, I'm so honored to be here. I've been looking forward to this for such a long time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I've finally arrived. (laughs) Let's just put our attention back on Jesus. He's the only one worth paying attention to anyway. So, a lot of times when I go and speak places, we have one worship, but what about second worship? Can we just, let's just lift our voice to the Lord. Hmm. Jesus. Let's lift our voices. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Mm. <laughs> mm. Shh. 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 Just begin to lift him up. Just begin to lift up your prayer language. Just begin to lift him up. Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Guys, 
the most important thing in your life, the most important thing you can ever do is the things that no one will ever see. The things that no one will ever see, those moments with Christ, alone with Him. Those moments when it's just you and Him. Because you could do all of the miracles, you could lead people to Christ every hour, on the hour, every day of your life, until you die. But if you don't know Him, He'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. God's not interested in slaves and servants. He's interested in friends. He's interested in people who know him. God is after your heart. All of the things that we could ever do for him should ev only ever be an outflow saying, God, I love you so much. Let me demonstrate my love for you with my service. Let me demonstrate my love for you by my love for my brothers and sisters. Let me demonstrate my love for you with the gifts that you've given me. I want to use them to worship you. The most important thing you could ever do is worship God. Because God is looking for one thing. You know something? In the Bible it says that the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the earth. Seeking what? You're right. It, you know what it doesn't say? It doesn't say he's seeking very gifted people. It doesn't say that he's seeking very smart people. It doesn't say that he's seeking people who will minister. The only thing that he's looking for are people whose hearts are completely devoted to him. As he's looking to and fro throughout the earth, I don't want his eyes to pass over me. I want him to see me and say, that's, that's the one. His heart is completely devoted to me. I want that to be me. In Exodus 33, Moses, he had received the Ten Commandments and Israel had sinned with the golden calf and the Lord was so angry with them that he said, you know what, I'm not even going to go with you into the promised land. Instead, I'll send an angel with you. But I won't go with you. He said, you can still have the promised land. My promises for you will still come to pass. I just won't be in it. Now, many of us would say, well, hot dog, I got an angel. <laughs> Angelic activity doesn't necessarily mean that he is present. And so, Moses, because he knew God, said, Not good enough, Lord. Not good enough. And in Exodus 33, he says, God, remember. Remember that we are your people. You said that you know me by name. This is what Moses is saying to the Lord. You said that you know me, know me by name and I have found favor in your sight. Well, if I really have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may please you, so that I may continue to find favor in your sight. And then, moreover, what does he say? He says, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. For what else will distinguish us and your people from every other people on the face of the earth? You have to understand what he said. He said, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Moses' name was prophetic about his destiny. Moses' name means drawn up, out of. He, he was the one who would deliver Israel, who would draw them up out of Egypt, right? His whole mission in life, the whole reason he was born was to deliver Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. And so... 
He's looking at his destiny in the face and he's saying, I would rather die in the desert than enter the promised land without you. There are promised lands in your life that God is calling you to. And guess what? It's possible that you could enter those promised lands, that you could have your dreams realized and still not live in his presence. And I want to tell you, it's not good enough. He could have had his promised land. But he was willing to risk never seeing his dream come to pass. If it meant that he could still have his presence. That's the kind of heart God's looking for. There's so many times in my life that I've cried out to God. And I've said, Lord, I just want to love you more. God, my love for you is insufficient. I want to love you more than I do. I sense the pull of other passions on my heart. I sense the pull of these things that would draw my affection away from you. And Lord, I just want to love you with all of my heart. But here's the thing about our love. The Bible says that we love him. Why? That's all right. We love him because he first loved us. That means our love is responsive in nature. We can only love to the extent that we allow ourselves to be loved by him. To the extent that you open up your heart and actually allow his love in is the extent to which you can actually reciprocate that love back to him. I remember one time in my life, um, I won't go through my whole life story, uh, it's too long. Uh, I, won't, I won't share my testimony, even though it's super cool. I, uh, I remember going into college and when I first went to college, I allowed myself to be distracted by college life. I never went into any sin or anything, but, you know, social life and studies and all those things sort of drew my affection away from, from the Lord. Well, that whole summer, before my freshman year, I had been praying and crying out to God, God, send revival. Send revival to my campus. Send revival to my school. I would go down in, into my basement and I would s spend time with the Lord and say, God, send your fire, send revival, because I don't want to be anywhere where you aren't. I don't want to be anywhere where there's not the outpouring of your presence. <coughs> I began to pray. I began to ask God to send his fire. But when I got to school, I got distracted. In my sophomore year, I began to think back to the days when I used to cry out and intercede. And, and I realized how cold my heart had gotten. That once I had been so on fire for God, and now I just don't feel any passion at all. And I began to look at my past relationship with God as this incredible ladder that I could never climb up. I would have to, you know... I, there was just, I loved God so much and I just didn't see any way that I could ever get back to that place. How many of you have ever been there? I was so distraught. I was so discouraged. I, I wanted to love God so badly and I just didn't. And I put on some worship music, not to worship, but I just put on some worship music, and I was just going to go to sleep. It had been forever since I had listened to any worship music at all. And I laid down on my bed just to go to sleep. I wasn't praying. I wasn't doing anything. And I heard the Lord speak to my heart, my son in whom I'm well pleased. 
And the moment I heard his voice in my heart, the fire just blazed up afresh. All of a sudden, my cold heart that was so dead, the second I heard his voice, the second that I heard him affirm me as his son, that he loved me so dearly, his love sparked a fire in me all over again. And it wasn't my love in the first place. My love was simply a reflection back to him of his incredible love for me. That as he began to love me, the fire began to burn in my heart. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you, if your heart is cold, God is pleased with you. And he loves you. And all he wants is for you to allow yourself to be loved by him. Why were you born in the first place? The purpose of our existence, the reason we were created in the first place, was simply to be the object of God's affection. There's one reason you're on the planet. It's so that God can love you. Our one job in life is to just simply allow ourselves to be loved by him. And our love for him is an automatic response. Our love for him springs up out of his love for us. I've had other times in my life where I've been burned out in ministry. For those of you who don't know much about me, I spend quite a bit of time in you know, healing, evangelism, and prophetic evangelism. I'm out on the streets and on the campus all the time. Uh, I've been privileged to lead lots and lots of people to Jesus, and it's just so much fun. It's, pr it's not very often that I will go to the grocery store and somebody doesn't get healed. And I don't say that to brag. I say that to say this is, this is just what God has done in me, and it's awesome. But, but, I've had many occasions where I began to feel really burned out on the whole deal. Where I, I would feel pressure to, I gotta pray for that person. I've gotta do this, I've, I've gotta step out, I've gotta be bold, why? Because that's what I do. And I'd feel pressure. Uh, and, and I actually went into a, a season of my life where I became so compulsive about it and so not motivated by love but motivated by fear of not having his anointing on my life. I, I, the, I would think, if I don't use it, I'll lose it. Mm. And I was so motivated by insecurity that I would pray for people and pray for people and pray for people. And I would even see people healed, but I would just feel so worn out. And I began to be afraid to leave my house and go grocery shopping or do anything because I was afraid of what God would ask me to do. The reason that I was burned out was because I lost sight of the thing that got it going in the first place. I lost sight of the fact that God loves me. I don't do this because I have to. Here's, if you aren't enjoying your life, who else would want it? If your life isn't filled with joy, why are you telling, sharing the gospel with anybody else? You need it more than they do. You need to allow the joy of the Lord to do its work within you because that is your strength for ministry. More Jesus. <laughs> F 
fire, 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 joy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Those of you who may not understand what's happening, I'd, you need to understand that this is the one thing that will sustain you in the supernatural life. burned out and broken, just lift your hands right now. If you need some of that joy, lift your hands right now. More Jesus. More Jesus. More Jesus. Shoot. <laughs> Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow. Hallelujah. Shh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Madam, here in the back, in the black shirt and the glasses, yeah, you, you. Could you stand up for me? What's your name? Tanya. Could you come here for a moment? I'm sorry. I only called you up because uh, it's, I can't hear you back there. You want to come over here? I, I felt like I was supposed to pray for you. Would that be okay? Yeah, could I take your hand? Here's what I sensed. I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to share what I believe are some words of knowledge. If I get them wrong, don't be nice to me, okay? Say, say it doesn't make sense, all right? So your name's Tanya, right? I sensed that the Lord was lifting off a burden of heaviness from your life and it even involved your family. And I felt like God was going to... Um, there are prayers that you've been praying and praying for your whole family and there are, uh, there are folks in your family that are just far from God. And I just sense that you've been interceding and praying for them and the Lord is going to begin to answer their prayers. And even this Christmas is going to be an amazing Christmas for you and for your whole family. And I even saw that the Lord was bringing healing through your back. Does that make sense? Are you dealing with pain? Okay. Okay. Yeah. What's your husband's name? Tim? Is, is the pain that he's feeling? It's right here in, in his right hip. I don't know if Tim's watching right now. But if, left side? Okay, well, Tim, if you're watching, be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Okay, okay, awesome. Yeah, and is there, is there any other, like, nerve damage or anything that you're struggling with personally? Or any pain at all? I'm not really getting anything. It's just I want to pray for you for healing if you need it. Yeah, okay, just give me your hand. Tanya, be healed. Shh. Right. <laughs> 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 
this. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> more Jesus. More Jesus. More Jesus. More Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Shoo. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Lord. Father, that she'd be able to sleep. Lord, that there would be peace, that the anxiety would leave, that she'd be able to sleep through the night, that she'd balance her hormones right now, Father, even in her thyroid, that there'd just be complete healing. Lord Jesus, even through her internal organs, God, and her digestive system, God, I thank you that you're healing it. The pain she's felt in the right uh, side of your stomach, the Lord is just bringing healing to that. He's healing you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. The Lord's <laughs> healing you. Mm. Even your finances. God is bringing blessing to you and your finances. And uh, what's your husband's name is Tim. Is that what you said? Yeah, Father. Tim, I, I thank you that you're blessing him with uh, uh, financial provision in Jesus' name. Major, major financial provision. And even a better job, Lord Jesus, than the one he has presently. God, I thank you that you're bringing it to him soon. In Jesus' name, Father, that his back wouldn't be an issue, that his right knee wouldn't be an issue, that his right shoulder wouldn't be an issue either. And, Lord, even for his lungs, that the tightness he's felt in his chest is being healed right now. In Jesus' name, God, I thank you that you're healing him. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Bless him. Hallelujah. Shh. You just hang out right here with Jesus, okay? You can, you can go sit down whenever you feel like it. Shh. Hmm. I have more notes. <laughs> God can anoint a donkey. <laughs> but he's looking for people who want to know him. He's looking for people that want him. He's looking for people that love him. He's looking for people that desire Him. Rather than seeking a greater anointing, we ought to seek Him. Rather than seeking greater service, greater power, all of these things. Listen, God wants to give it to us. He'll give it to us. But what's better for you? I don't think we understand the emptiness of a life of service without a real knowledge of God. It's meaningless. What's the point? Where's the joy in that? The whole joy of life is knowing God. The Lord is looking for people that are hungry for Him. I want to bring a little bit of a, correct, a correction to something that I think is wonderful. I correct it because I love it so much. As the, there's a movement about our identity in Christ that is so powerful, it's so transformative, and it's absolutely 100% true. That that in our new identity in Christ, we're, we've died to the old self and we're made new in the attitude of our mind and we put on the new self, which, as Ephesians says, is created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness, right? And, it, you know, Romans 6 says, as many as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, I believe, it talks about uh, how... Um, it's actually talking about sexual immorality in the church. Paul is correcting sexual immorality. And he's saying, shall I take a member of Christ? He says, don't you know that your bodies are very temples of the Holy Spirit? You are, your bodies are members of Christ. And shall I take a member of Christ and join it with a prostitute? No, far be it from me, right? Now, that's an amazing corrective word, 
But it's also an amazing reality to think that actually he was talking about somebody's physical body being a member of Christ. That these hands are Christ's hands and these feet are Christ's feet and these lips are Christ's lips. That my body is an expression of Jesus on the earth. And even more than that, that he says that we together are being built into a temple of the Holy Spirit. That what's true of me is more manifestly true of us. That we are an expression of Christ together as a body. It's not just me and Jesus, it's us. And Jesus through us. And Jesus in us. Now, here's the correction I want to make. As wonderful as that all is, sometimes it can lead people to be satisfied with the experience they have without understanding that there's so much more that God wants to give. Some of us have been content with the theology of union with Christ rather than hungry for the reality, hungry for the experience. In Psalm 84, I literally had to drive, I came here, drove here, forgot my notes, went, drove back to get my notes and came back, I'm not using my notes. <laughs> Psalm 84, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation, we're starting in verse one, it says, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, body, and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow builds her nest and raises her young at a place near your altar. O Lord of heaven's armies, my King and my God, what joy for those who can live in your house, always singing your praises, Selah. What joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord, who have set their minds on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. When they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. They will continue to grow stronger, and each of them will appear before God in Jerusalem. O Lord God of heaven's armies, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob, Selah. O God, look with favor upon the king, our shield. Show favor to the one you have anointed. Listen to this. Listen to this. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. O oh Lord of heaven's armies, what joy for those who trust in you. That's a prophetic word over this house. How lovely is your dwelling place. Listen, this place is his dwelling place. Now you are his dwelling place and we are his dwelling place. But this body is also the dwelling place of the Lord. And God is doing something among you corporately that is special. I saw in my prayer, I saw the Lord taking what is happening here in the loft and making it a regional movement. I saw the Lord taking what is happening here and spreading it throughout the region, throughout Illinois, throughout southern Missouri, throughout Kentucky, and into Arkansas. I saw the Lord spreading it. And in fact, some of you in this place are called to plant churches and are called to take what God is doing here and transplanting it to other places. And you know who you are because as I'm speaking, your heart is beginning to burn. The heart of the psalmist here is a heart that's hungry for God, meditating on the loveliness of his dwelling. That my heart longs for you, Lord. My heart longs for the place where you dwell. 
I am longing for you, Lord. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. Listen to this. Verse 11, the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. Listen, Loft. It is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He longs to give you the things that your hearts desire. He longs to give you the things that your heart cries out for. Don't fail to ask him for it. Don't fail to seek him for it. God is longing. God is longing to give you. Because the dreams that you have are the dreams that he put there in the first place. You know, Ephesians says that it is God who works in you both to will and to do according to the things that please him most. The things that you long to do for him are the very dreams and desires that he's poured into your hearts. <laughs> Here's my message. God's looking for worshipers. God's looking for people who will seek him. He's not looking for ministers. He's not looking for people who can do fancy things. He's looking for worshipers. And if you will be a worshiper, if you will devote your heart to him, if you will take your heart and set it on the altar, if you will remove every ounce of compromise from your life, if you will say, God, I'm yours and I'm no one else's. I belong to you completely. My life, my body, my flesh is all yours. Come, O Spirit of God, and burn within me. He will take you and he will bring you around the nations because people will come from miles to watch you burn with the fire of God. People will come to see what God will do. What could God do through you if you would give him what you have? Don't hold out on him. Allow him to pour his love upon you. And his fire will consume everything. When I first encountered the Lord, it wasn't the first time I felt his presence, but it was the first time that I really felt his love for me personally. I was so bound. I was so bound in fear and rejection and felt like God was never going to forgive my sins. And I felt like I was on the outside. I would come to church and I would look at all the people who know God and I would feel like an outsider because I'd look at them and say, they know God and I don't. I was on the worship team. I was the pastor's kid. I knew the Bible better than most. And I felt like an absolute outsider in church. I felt like I did not belong. And then, one day, I walked into a chapel at a church camp, 15 or 16. I was not thinking about Jesus. I was thinking about the girls I was going to flirt with after the whole church thing was over at the snack shack. <laughs> <laughs> but when I walked into the church when I walked into that chapel the power of God fell on me the love of God fell on me and I was overcome with his love and his grace and his mercy and I began weeping uncontrollably I could not compose myself no matter what I did I was so embarrassed that I went to the back and I buried my face. Because, you know, I wanted to look cool for the ladies, right? And I went and I buried my face in the back in the carpet and I began to weep. And I wept through the, through the worship and I wept through the sermon and I wept through the whole service because God's love was breaking this bondage in my life that I had to this spirit of rejection. And as I wept and as I wept and as I wept, I told the Lord... God, if you're really this good, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. If you want to be used of God, all you need to do is allow him to love you. 
allow him to pour his love upon you. He's a father who longs to lavish his love upon you. He longs for you to simply surrender yourself to be the object of his affections. Some of you are experiencing that right now. We're going to move into a time of ministry. If, if you need that love, if your love has grown cold, maybe you've never experienced the love of God before. I've got news for you. He's here. He loves you. You're his favorite. He loves you so much. If you're here and you've never felt the love of God, you don't know God, but you really want to, would you just raise a hand? If you're here and you don't know God, but you want to, I see that hand back there. Is there anyone else? You want to know God. You feel like an outsider in church. And you want to know him. Just lift up your hand. I want to pray for you. Praise God. Father, I pray for that precious woman who raised her hand, that your power and your love would come upon her right now. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're healing brokenness from her family. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're bringing hope to her again. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're healing... Uh, Father, the wounds that have been put there even by her own father. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're bringing hope to her afresh. I thank you, Father, that anxiety and fear and depression are being broken off of her life. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that everything is being made new right now. I thank you, God, that even the pain that she's experienced through her spine and in her stomach is being made whole right now. And I thank you, Lord, that you're doing this because you love her so much. And Lord, I pray that you would come and introduce yourself to her in a precious and wonderful way. In Jesus' name. If you're here, uh, if you're here and you just need refreshing, would you stand up? If you need a refreshing from the Holy Spirit, just stand up. trying to figure out what to do next. <laughs> Give me a minute. Just lift your hands up. Here's what I want you to say. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I open myself to you. I'm allowing you to love me again. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Some of you are being healed right now, physically. I even see somebody being healed of the long-term effects of a car accident. Even people with metal in their bodies, I just sense that God's healing you. His love is just coming and bringing healing to you. I just, yeah, I just don't even sense that you really need anybody to lay hands on you. I just sense that the Lord himself is ministering to you right now. Peace, peace of God.
peace of God. Everyone that deals with chronic migraines, would you just wave a hand at me? Every, everyone with the chronic migraines, wave your hand. Okay, keep your hand up. In Jesus' name, be healed. Spirit of anxiety, leave. Spirit of fear, leave. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, be healed. The chronic migraines are leaving. And uh, the woman back here in the Kentucky uh, hoodie, what's your name? Would you come forward with it? Is that all right? I'm going to put you on the spot if that's okay. We're just going to move into a time of ministry. Guys, if, if God puts something on your heart, I'm, I'm not going to bogart the mic. So if you get a word of knowledge, if you get something, just come and share. Art, my, my dear, dear friend Art has uh, a word. Faith, could I take your hand? And you waved your hand saying you, you deal with the chronic migraines, right? You also have an issue through your spine, is that right? You have two curves in your spine. Yeah, right here and then right here. And it affects all your all your entire right side. But also, um, oddly enough, it's this shoulder that you actually deal with some issues in, right? Yeah. And um, do you also deal with a, a, an issue in the inner ear on this side? Yeah. Your, re your eardrum was reconstructed, and um, how does that affect you right now? Okay, yeah, okay. So it affects your hearing. Okay, also you, you have problems with your vision too, is that right? You, you deal with wavy lines in your vision that you get in your right eye. And it gets worse when you get the headaches, but it's always kind of there, is that right? The kind of spots. You have wavy lines in this one and kind of spots in the other, is that right? Yeah, and I just sense that, um, uh, have you, you've also, was there like a car accident uh, 15 years ago? Yeah, a car accident 15 years ago that, uh, that actually, that's where a lot of the back issues came from, right? And that's a f some of the nerve damage from y your lower back issue has also affected the organs in your stomach. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Right. It's, ac it's actually things are like sort of in the wrong places. Like they've kind of been moved into places they shouldn't be. Is that right? You don't know what it is. Yeah, you're, you're just feeling the pain all over. Mm -hmm. But also, um, and your right hip flexor muscle, um, like the front of your leg, right? It, it, you have like a tear or something like that, or it's just been hurting you? Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. So um, the reason that I'm doing this, normally, I, I just want to share with these folks, if that's okay. I'm. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. The reason I'm doing this in front of all of you guys is because I'm building your faith for, be, for something that God is going to make normal for you. Normally, I do this one-on-one, -on -one, and I don't make a big deal out of that. I felt like I needed to do this in front of folks because God was imparting something to you and encouraging your faith because I felt like... It, in the way that God uses me in words of knowledge from time to time, I, I felt like God was going to take that and, and place it on this house, that, that it would be added to your faith, and that this would be something that God would do every day through you guys. That's why I'm doing this in, in, in here instead of one-on-one, -on -one, which is how I normally do it. By the way, God uses me much more powerfully in one-on-one -on -one situations where no one else is watching than he does in front of everybody. And uh, that, I think that's on purpose. Can I take your hand, Faith? I'm going to pray for you. God's going to heal you. Where's the pain right now that you feel? All the way down the right side. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You ready to get free? Yeah. Is it hurting you right now at, at the moment? Yeah. Be healed. <laughs> Yeah, Jesus. I command the pain to go. Restore the discs that have been uh, uh, wounded, the discs that have been crushed and destroyed from this car accident 15 years ago. 
Thank you, God, that you're bringing healing right now to the migraines. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're bringing hope again. Father, even through her thyroid, I thank you that you're bringing healing to that in Jesus' name. I right now speak to this ear, open in the name of Jesus, open in the name of Jesus, open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Faith, can you do me a favor? I'm going to snap by both of your ears. I want to tell me if, you, if they sound different, okay? Do they sound different? Okay, it's less in, on this ear than it is on the other? Okay. In the name of Jesus, I speak to that ear to open up. Yeah, go ahead. Don't don't uh, be spectators here. Let's let's participate. Let's pray together. Eh? Yeah, extend a hand towards faith. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Shoo! Hey, more Jesus. Sharakesetereki. Wow, you feel that? <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Shoo! More Lord, more Lord, more Lord. Right now, Father, for faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, right now, ear open, ear open. How's it sound? Do they still sound, they sound the same now? Wow, that's so crazy. Now, I want you to move around, I want you to move your back, and I want you to try to find any pain that's left, okay? If there's pain, tell me about it. A little bit right there. Okay, let's, okay, let's pray again. Eh? In Jesus' name, I thank you that you're healing there. Thank you for what you've done. Hey, be healed in Jesus' name. Hey, Right now, I speak to that back and that uh, stomach to be healed. Now, be healed in Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. There it is. For your feet too. The Lord's healing those. Actually, this the Lord's recreating your arch and your foot. Uh, in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. For these knees in Jesus' name. Be healed. The Lord's given you an overhaul. And it's going to be a testimony even to your family. You're, you have so many family members that are just far from God. And the Lord's going to use you to bring a revival to your family. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Father, in Jesus' name, be healed. And be healed. Be healed. Hallelujah. Okay, go ahead and move again. See if you can find the pain. If it's, if it's still there, tell me about it. I want to know. Not feeling it right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I give you a hug? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's fun. 